Hello students, welcome to IAS by Heart. This is the sixth session of the Prelims Heast series where we are going to cover more than 500 questions expected for Prelims 2021. So without further delay, let's jump into the first question. The first question is about the Mercy Petitions. This was in news because of uh, the Rajiv Gandhi case convict, uh, Perari Valan. His mercy plea is pending with the governor of Tamil Nadu. On this context, the question is asked, mercy petition can be exercised only after all legal remedies were exhausted. Yes, that is true. Mercy petition can be filed with the president or the governor. That is also true. The scope of the pardoning power of the president under article 72 is narrower, is narrower than the pardoning power of the governor under article 161. So if you see, we know that the pardoning power of the president is greater than that of the pardoning power of the governor. So if you remove the third option, the answer comes to be A or B. And uh, the first question, the first statement is also true. So the answer to this question is option B, one and two only. Before that, uh, we'll see about the, the pardoning powers granted under the constitution, article 72. Article 72 provides for the pardoning power of the president of India. So here he can grant pardons. Uh, pardon means a complete uh, forgiveness, like a complete absolution of all the sentences given to him. Reprise. Reprise means a special condition because of which the sentence is suspended for a temporary period. Respite means reduction in sentence due to a special condition. Remission means reduction in the punishment. So these are the different technical terms associated with the pardoning power of the president. And uh, a remittance or commutation. Commutation also means reduction in the term of the sentence without reducing the nature of the punishment given. Okay, in all cases where the punishment or sentence is by a court martial in uh, against any laws to which the power of executive power of union extends. Okay, and also for death sentence. So in these three cases, the president has the power to pardon. And uh, coming back to the pardoning power of the governor, Article 161, it says the governor has these powers on matter in which the executive power of the state extends. This power is obviously limited or it is very narrow compared to a president's power. And uh, the scope, the comparison of the scope is done here. President can pardon anyone convicted of any offense against the central law. Whereas a governor can do the same only against any violation of any state law. And also he can pardon, reprieve, respite, remit, suspend or commute a death sentence. He has the only authority to pardon a death sentence. This point is very important. This is a very contrasting point to the governor's pardoning power. He cannot pardon a death sentence. Governor cannot pardon a death sentence, but he can always uh, suspend, remit or commute a death sentence. Okay. So the pardoning power does not lie with the governor. And uh, coming back to the president's power, he can get, grant pardon, reprieve, respite, suspension, remission, or commutation in respect of punishment to or sentence by a court martial, uh, that is the military court. And uh, governor does not have any such powers. This is also a, an important difference. Now, let's see what is the procedure to file a mercy petition. So we have also seen that the mercy petition can be filed only after all the legal remedies have been exhausted. And here the written petition is filed either by the person, the convict himself or by his relative on his behalf. This is filed before the president or the governor, depending on which uh, law he is in violation of. After that, the petition will be forwarded to the Ministry of Home Affairs for comments and recommendations. And as soon as the ministry analysis, the merits of the mercy petition, it is uh, forwarded to the Council of Ministers, who then recommend to the President to either accept or reject the mercy plea. But you have to note that there is no time limit prescribed for the President to exercise this power. 
okay so this can also be asked as a statement whether there is any time limit uh, on which the president must act on this matter okay so let's move on to the next question question number 2 on uh, economy this is about uh, gst a zero rated supply under gst means that the rate of tax as per gst act is zero what they are saying is zero rated supply means zero percent gst okay coming back to the second statement exempted supply refers to the host of goods or services taxable as per the gst act but are particularly exempted from gst so exempted supply means uh, for goods and services for which gst is applicable but they are exempted maybe due to socio economic reasons or any other reasons okay non gst activity refers to the supplies that are not under the purview of gst law okay so basically non gst activities refers to activities which are outside the scope of gst okay so the correct answer to this question is 1 2 and 3 all the statements given about are true okay let's see some examples for each of them so zero rated supply which means 0% tax uh, this usually refers to uh, most of the supplies brought in by special economic zones all those supplies attract 0% gst so they are called zero rated supplies exempted supplies these are fishes uh, poultry egg etc which are very important for the nutritional security of the country so these things are exempted under gst so as to provide food security to the nation so these things are exempted these uh, things come under exempted supply non gst activity are covers the things that are not under the gst law they are petroleum electricity and uh, we also have alcohol for uh, these three items a uh, state vat central duty etc applies gst is not applicable to these items so uh, recently there has been a growing voice that petrol should be brought under gst so that is why this question is asked so petrol petroleum and uh, crude oil is a non gst activity all the petroleum products come under non gst activity that is the point that you have to note here let's uh, look at the explanation let's look at the difference between exempted supply zero rated supply and activities not covered under gst so zero rated supply means the tax rate is 0% like i said the supply is made to secs or seg developers they are 0% tax and uh, exempted are basically the ones which are taxable under gst but are exempted from gst like uh, fresh milk fruits vegetables curd bread meat etc these are done for socio economic reasons or any other commercial reasons and uh, non gst activities include the ones which are not under the purview of gst law alcohol petroleum products etc electricity is also included here let's move on to the next question desert night desert night is a joint exercise between india and which of the following country this exercise has recently concluded this exercise was between indian air force and the france air force the answer is b let's look about it in detail indian air force and french air and space force conducted a bilateral air exercise called the desert night 21 at jodhpur from 20 to 24 jan 2021 last month so this exercise is being held in addition to the garuda series exercise garuda is basically the air exercise with uh, france india and france takes part in garuda series of exercises so this is conducted as a part of that and uh, the main objective is to provide operational exposure and share best practices this time the exercise is unique because of the fielding of rafale aircraft by both sides remember we bought rafale aircrafts from france so this exercise includes rafale training and fielding by both the countries okay now uh, let's look at other exercises defense exercises between india and france a baruna 
is the naval exercise between the two navies of the country garuda as we said air exercise and shakti is the army exercise between the two countries okay let's move on to the next question consider the following statements about business confidence index so business confidence index was recently in news the first statement states that it was released by reserve bank of india coming to the second statement the report states that the fiscal stimulus under these schemes will accelerate the public investment okay third statement states that the private investment will remain sluggish because of low capacity utilization so the important thing to note here is whether this index was released by rbi or not we know that consumer confidence index is released by rbi but this index business confidence index is not released by rbi so the answer to this question is option c 2 and 3 only let's see why uh like i said business confidence index was published by national council for academic and economic research this institute releases the business confidence index and it is an indicator of business sentiment across the indian industry and this finding is based on responses from 500 firms so the key takeaways is uh, you have to note index talks about a v shaped recovery in the business sentiments in indian economy and uh, the index also notes that the 29.6% increase between the third and second and third quarters of the financial year in the business sentiment it is uh, the increase is due to the covid-19 vaccination drive that is happening in several countries so people are getting hope and the indian economy is following the recovery path and will show a positive growth in the third quarter and uh, like we said this uh, institution is a new delhi based non profit economic think tank which releases the business confidence index okay note that rbi releases consumer confidence index whereas national council for academic and uh, economic research releases business confidence index okay let's move on to the next question this question is about carbon sequestration this is a very famous topic which is uh, which we see in news very frequently so carbon sequestration occurs as a result of anthropogenic activities only and typically refers to the storage of carbon actually carbon sequestration refers to the storage of carbon that part is true but uh, if you see whether it is a result of anthropogenic activities only or not that part of the statement is false it is also a natural process okay now let's uh, see the second statement better oil recovery as a result of stored carbon in underground chambers is one of the advantages of this process so better oil recovery can it be done by uh, carbon sequestration yes let's see how in the explanation part and a third statement says that it can also lead to ocean ocean acidification this is also true the answer to this question is c Two and three only. So carbon sequestration is the carbon storage process in uh, plants, soils, geological formations, and ocean. So carbon can be stored in any of these items. The carbon sequestration occurs both naturally and as a result of anthropogenic activities. Let's see the different types of carbon sequestration. The first one is terrestrial carbon sequestration and it is the process through which CO2 is absorbed by trees plants through photosynthesis and stored as carbon in soils and biomass this is terrestrial carbon sequestration using biomass the other type is geological carbon sequestration here carbon dioxide is stored in oil reservoirs gas reservoirs unmineable coal seams etc and uh, this is how it can lead to better oil discovery because once you store co2 inside these gas reservoirs they might accelerate the oil formation process so that's uh, that is why it can result in better oil discovery 
and uh, if you see the third point about the ocean carbon sequestration oceans absorb release and store large amounts of co2 from the atmosphere how can we accelerate this ocean carbon sequestration this can be done by enhancing the productivity of ocean biological systems through iron fertilization when you do iron fertilization it will stimulate the phytoplankton production so once uh, phytoplankton are produced in more quantity photosynthesis will happen and we just now saw photosynthesis is an important factor of carbon sequestration and also injecting co2 into the deep ocean this can also be done so let's see a small video so this is how carbon is sequestrated and this is in the sea floor okay let's uh, see the challenges of artificial carbon sequestration so we saw that uh, carbon can be sequestrated both naturally and artificially but uh, there are some challenges associated with artificial carbon sequestration firstly the lack of technology not all countries possess technology for cap uh, carbon capture and storage that is an important challenge and uh, secondly artificial carbon sequestration is costly and energy intensive and uh, there is also not much research associated with it so we might not know what the long term consequences of artificial carbon sequestration might be so that is also touted as a challenge and uh, third point says carbon dioxide may be stored deep underground but these uh, when it is stored deep uh, sometimes due to falls or fissures due to tectonic processes this carbon dioxide might escape to the surface or uh, maybe in the if it is stored in the ocean it might come back into the ocean water and this might result in ocean acidification because we know water plus carbon dioxide will give you carbonic acid so this kind of acidification might happen so that is what is being said here and this is also the third statement of our question so but there are certain advantages as well artificial carbon sequestration faster sequestration because we, you see the natural carbon sequestration process is very slow and the rate at which we are emitting carbon dioxide it might not be feasible to depend only on natural processes so artificial carbon sequestration definitely quickens this process and uh, there can be enhanced agricultural yield and better oil recovery as a result of underground store to carbon because by storing carbon under the soil and under the oil reserves we might enrich the soil or the reserves so this might actually yield better returns for us in the future and thirdly employment generation because uh, this is a very energy in intensive cost intensive labor intensive process this can provide employment opportunities for multiple countries let's move on to the next question so this question is about scientific social responsibility and uh, the first statement says india is going to be the first country in the world to implement a scientific social responsibility policy on the lines of corporate social responsibility okay we might have heard about the term scientific social responsibility but uh, do we know whether we are the first country the answer is this is true we are going to be the first country to implement ssr this was first talked about in 2020 in the indian science congress the prime minister talked about an idea of having a scientific social responsibility to bridge the science gap and to improve the scientific temper among the population the second statement says under it researchers who are working on projects funded by any of the central ministries will have to undertake activities to popularize science and improve accessibility both the statements given here are true the answer is c let's see more about it so the scientific social responsibility is the confluence of scientific knowledge visionary leadership and social consciousness so this was a relatively new a new concept 
only from 2020 we are talking about this and uh, the aim of this activity is to build a synergy among different stakeholders and to develop linkages between the science and the society because we know there is a large gap between the scientific community and the society so under this program researchers working in the project will have to undertake activities to popularize science and make it more accessible to the public that is the aim of this initiative and it will uh, include activities like delivering lectures in educational institutes writing an article in a magazine or doing something beyond the curriculum to reach the general population this scientific outreach would be mandatory you see this is this would be mandatory for researchers being paid by central ministries okay so it is said that the department of science and technology will come up with a list of activities that might be included under scientific social responsibility okay that's all you have to know about this one let's move on to the seventh question so this question is about the jal jeevan mission okay so which state recently achieved the 100% tap water connections in schools and anganwadi centers under the jal jeevan mission by ministry of jal shakti the answer is telangana so let's see some additional information about this issue recently telangana joined a group of states that has ensured tap water connections to all schools and anganwadi centers okay previously the state was the first to provide ta tap water connections to all households telangana was the first state to provide a tap water connection to all households now it has ensured tap connection to schools and anganwadi centers also okay this achievement was recognized by the center recently center recognized okay so the work on providing connection to schools anganwadi centers is being done under a 100 day special campaign of the ministry of jal shakti why is it, why is it being done because children are the one who are more susceptible to water borne diseases so giving them a clean water to drink is very vital and especially the need for repeated hand washing to prevent the spread of covid-19 pandemic we also know that the schools and anganwadi centers are reopening so it is highly necessary to ensure that schools and anganwadi centers have access to clean, clean drinking water so this uh, so telangana has now joined the states of andhra pradesh himachal pradesh goa haryana tamil nadu in providing tap water in all schools and anganwadi centers okay you have to know something about uh, mission bagiratha mission bagiratha is a project for safe drinking water launched by telangana itself so this is a state initiative and this is the brain child of telangana chief minister mr k chandrashekhar rao this aims to provide piped drinking water to 2.4 people of the state okay this will provide clean drinking water to all households in the state and uh, how is the water source the water is sourced from river godavari and river krishna okay let's move on to the next question question number 8 sankalp park so sankalp park initiative was in the news recently and uh, this was launched by which of the following ministry that is being asked sankalp park was launched by the ministry of culture option b so what does it sankal park deal with so the sankal park deal with ensuring a clean and healthy environment by planting at least five indian trees or uh, the trees which represent the herbal heritage of the country so this was launched by ministry of culture based on the call of the prime minister so these trees include bargad avla pipal ashok and bel bargad is nothing but the banyan tree avla is our uh, normal amla tree the indigenous one and uh, we also have a pipal tree it has a uh, very much significance in the buddhist history and we have ashok tree and bel tree which gives us wooden apples okay 
these are five indigenous trees which represent the herbal heritage of our country and uh, this mission is to plant these trees wherever possible either be it in the office or in your workspace or in your home so let's move on to the next question this question is about the conclusive land titling and uh, the first statement says under conclusive land titling scheme land records designate actual ownership okay the title is granted by the government which takes responsibility for the accuracy okay and the uh, third statement says once the title is granted any other claimant will have to settle disputes with the government and not the title holder okay this statement is also true all the given statements here are true first of all let's look at what conclusive land titling is about the answer to this question is d so currently right now india follows a presumptive land titling that is it means that the land record is maintained with the information of possession which is determined through details of past transactions okay ownership is established on the basis of current possession whoever owns the land right now he is the owner that is what is presumptive land titling is about but what is this conclusive land titling that the government is wishing to switch over to so here the land records designate actual ownership that is the government will provide you the title ship of the land you can own the land uh, according to the land records given by the government you see uh, the registration process which is happening right now the government is not at all involved so uh, this in conclusive land titling the government will be actively involved here the title is granted by the government which takes responsibility for the accuracy and uh, once the title is granted any other claimant will have to settle disputes with the government and not the title holder okay so the title holder will have assured ownership so he can take any activities to improve the productivity of the land or to invest in the land in whatever form he wishes fit okay so the government may provide compensation to the claimants in case of disputes but the title holder is not in danger of any ownership loss okay let's move on to the challenges and advantages of this process here the uh, digital land records will facilitate the switch to conclusive land titling and uh, the draft legislations will propose that the states move from presumptive to conclusive system and uh, this will be a unified legal framework throughout india uh, let's see how it will help it will reduce the land related litigations you also have to note the existing litigations will be unaffected only the future land litigations will be altered by this because only after a uh, conclusive land titling is implemented any other litigation that uh, comes henceforth will be covered under this act the pending legislations will continue as it is and uh, here the farmers will also get easy access to credit because they don't have to worry about uh, uh, land disputes they they will possess the land title and they can show it in the bank and get uh, credit from formal sources and uh, this will also make the land acquisition easier and uh, this will uh, make the real estate transaction more transparent and the title holders will also be eligible for compensation from the government okay these are the advantages of this scheme modifying the land reforms is one of the important aspects of this government and uh, they have made conclusive land titling as their next objective let's see uh, what are the challenges that might come in the implementation of this program here the biggest challenges is the land records have not been updated for decades most of the states do not have proper digital land records so it will not be possible to switch to conclusive land titling immediately because the states uh, lack any data and uh, here the land records are also often in the name of grandparents with no proof of inheritance so this might also come a, as an issue we uh, the government might not be able to provide proper land titles for most of the lands especially the one uh, the farmers possess and um, unless they are based on updated records conclusive land titles could create even more problems 
okay so this any step in this regard has to be carefully planned and crafted any quick urgent moves might only result in confusion and anxiety for the population let's move to the last question for today dickinsonia recently in news is is a fossil of an earliest known living animal the answer is c let's see the explanation recently researchers have discovered three fossils of the earliest known living animal dickinsonia on the roof of bimbetka rock shelters bimbetka rock shelters is in madhya pradesh so this is a very important discovery because this is the first time they are being discovered in india apart from australia russia and ukraine it is an ex extinct genus of basal animal basal is nothing but bilaterally symmetrical you see they are bilaterally symmetrical both the sides are exactly similar so uh, that's why they are called basal animals uh, they lived during the ediacaran period and the individual dickinsonia typically resembles a bilaterally symmetrical ribbed oval okay and uh, researchers have also discovered cholesterol molecules in the fossils of dickinsonia which supports the idea that dickinsonia was an animal we are still not sure that whether it is a plant or a plant or animal but uh, the cholesterol molecules present in this fossil makes a strong statement that they are they bear an animal the earliest evidence for animals on earth is now the dickinsonia 558 million years ago okay so that's all we have here now uh, let's have a quick recap of all the questions which we have seen and i want you to comment about any doubts that you have in these questions here we saw about the mercy petition it was in news very frequently because of uh, peradi balan's mercy plea and uh, we saw about uh, gst that is uh, a zero rate gst what does that mean what is exempted gst and what is non gst regime and uh, we saw about the desert night exercise under garuda and indo french uh, and indo french collaboration we saw about a uh, business conference index and how it has improved because of the covid-19 vaccination drive we saw about carbon sequestration different types of carbon sequestration and uh, we also saw about a scientific social responsibility and then we saw about jaljeevan mission of bagiradi of uh, state of telangana and uh, then we saw about sengal parva of ministry of culture where five indigenous heritage trees are planned to be planted and promoted and then we saw about conclusive land titling its uh, advantages challenges etc and then we saw about the earliest living mammal dickinsonia which was found recently in bimbetka caves for the first time in india so if you have any doubts regarding these questions please mention in the comment box below i would be really glad to explain you any of these points again and uh, do you have any other questions regarding various other programs which are being conducted by ias by heart if you don't have any questions let's wrap it up for this session stay tuned for upcoming sessions i will see you in another video just keep watching these sessions to stay updated with current affairs and also prepare for upsc 2021 thank you